so hello and welcome in my fifth preview for Sam. As you know, I adopted Abra, my new dog, and she is data protection for this project. And here is what we're trying to achieve. So we're using Sam to generate the geometry and uh, translating it to different tools like TAS, Honeybee, and uh, JSON. And this video will demonstrate some of the examples. Um, so let's start. So ideas will be we're just gonna do analytical model creation and we're gonna show the links. So in sum, uh, first and the basic uh, object is the panel and the panel we can uh, generate using uh, different uh, object. We can draw the enclosed polyline, we can draw the surface or the surface with, uh, with a hole. And uh, here we're just uh, connecting this to the automatic recognition and our panel uh, recognition is based on the normal, which is the angle. So there is super new cool feature in Rhino, which Kike uh, and McNeil team implemented, where we can inspect and explode the nodes. And as you can see at the moment, it is wall, I can uh, close if I don't need to see all the uh, variables. And now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna show the this is the yellow color, which means it's external wall. And now I'm gonna select all the walls and uh, rotate them. And this will be recognized as different objects. So at the moment, normal is down, which will be the floor and default is the ground floor. When I rotate, Feather 90 degree C will be wall again, and if I do it again, it will become roof when it's pointing up. So this is how we do this kind of basic recognition for our uh, for our panels. So let's do now <clears throat> some uh, next step. We can also uh, try to connect apart from single surfaces. We could surfaces, we can also connect the enclosed figure. So in this case, we could also select a polyline and and actually close. So we could create the walls that are made of a few different uh, elements. Okay. And uh, let's try now to create a box. So we can also do the recognition of this kind of uh, full enclosed uh, solids. So I will create uh, one box. Let me duplicate this. And uh, I will just set one geometry. So as you can see, the roof, walls, and floor will be recognized. And I will just add the second box that will overlap this box. So we'll try to make a model from two different boxes. Okay, they are the same, so I will maybe rise one up, so there will be a bit more complicated case. And now I will just select uh, two geometries. And as I can see, at the moment I have two uh, boxes, so th there is no any recognition, it's just the panel creation. And if you want to have something more meaningful, we're connecting this to our topology link. And what it allows us to do, it will split and recognize the uh, panel. So I will at the moment uh, transfer the other panels uh, to a shade and I will combine everything to uh, topologic. And what it should give us, we just need to uh, run it. As you can see, at the moment I have a shade panel and elements. So I will just run it. Okay, and now we should have our model. So I will just connect uh, update panels and update construction. So we, in future, maybe we're gonna merge together. At the moment, we have to separate. Just so in case if you are not using model from Revit, we do this kind of automatic recognition for panels if it's internal, external, and so on. So we're just gonna connect our inspect node. And we're gonna uh, visualize this. So I have here the panels and I can have a look in uh, exposed to the sun. So we, we can see here is exposed floor and all the walls. 
let me maybe hide this one so we can see better that it is actually empty from the bottom and here is the all the walls and there is all the ground panels and here is all internal panels so it's internal floor and internal walls so this was working fine and here we have some kind of option that we could actually filter by name so if we connect our panels we could swap between internal walls and internal floors so this is quite nice a new feature that we can select some elements uh, directly for the object so we can do the same for the roof okay so this is just the basic way how we generate uh, geometry uh, in in some and uh, the next option is to show just the outline and based on the outline we're just generating the building so i'll just visualize it again so here we can see that we have also the a bit more complex building and i will use this one just to show how we transfer them to ladybug so i will just select all and here we have the i will just remove this one as well and here is completed this kind of agency cluster and this will be the step where we're starting our uh, our show so here i have this kind of uh, model with uh, shades and all the different types we have internal and external doors we have the semi-transparent which is the air and we have a glazed and solid door and glazed and solid windows and we have part underground including underground ceiling and this is our model so those are the aperture and as you can see the aperture drawn in some as a one long item and if you draw any walls they will be automatically split through some process and we added also some kind of log will show any errors before you export uh, anywhere else so let's have a try with uh, to with link to TAS so I will just run it so what we'll do we'll export gbxml import to TAS update all the construction materials because this is the new feature which we implemented so this should be uh, quite a quick uh, simulation and it should run uh, simulation and yeah and uh, use all our input data including our own materials so we are not using any default one as you can see model was imported and everything is recognized in TAS we have lots of freedom so we could have a glass wall or a transparent on solid windows or door so <clears throat> so this is quite nicely with some uh, idea because we don't have any limitation obviously when we transfer later on different tools we have to do some swaps but over here we don't have any any limit so we could have uh, all the option and you can see windows was split by the wall so this is quite uh, quite nice so we run all the simulation here we updated building elements and dynamic simulation was uh, completed the second option we can send it to json and this is in collaboration with Tio that we have this viewer that we could just now load this file and uh, visualize this in the web browser and because we just added now a construction materials so probably the next step will be just to add them uh, here as well so this super cool tools because you could just visualize model without <clears throat> any um, any tool in just web browser on the phone or or on your pc okay so we're going to the next bit and this is the main thing so we di uh, converting directly our model with construction to honeybee and as you can see we have all correctly recognized walls internal walls roofs and all the material construction are also translated uh, accordingly and for me this is super cool because this will opening for us all the new uh, story and capability as you can see with the internet aperture the some of um, our solid window are transferred to doors and doors in honeybee can be uh, transparent and opaque so we don't have this issue and all our curtain wall was replaced for honeybee as a wall with uh, inserted windows and we have this 10 percent offset on the edges because this is not allowed in honeybee so we do this automatic offsetting 
and this is actually super cool. Okay, so here we can see all our boundary condition. We have surfaces, ground, so this is correct recognition, and here we can see that all the spaces are conditioned. I'm gonna use this kind of new method pixel counting, and this is super cool because allow us to have non-convex uh, geometry. After simulation, uh, we can see all the temperature for all the rooms for whole year. So this is super cool, all standard ladybug capability, but so nicely streamlined that uh, I really love it. Uh, in this case, we just show the average zone operative temperature for different spaces. So we have here the edge room uh, and uh, yeah, and here we can also show the normals for all the surfaces. So this was a great collaboration with Chris and the, the guys were super uh, helpful. So I really enjoyed this amazing uh, collaboration with, with the team. Okay, here we can see the total uh, energy for the building with the split per month for heating, cooling and all the all the <clears throat> energy. And below is this uh, parallel link to uh, radiance, where we run the daylight factor and annual grid. So here is our grid uh, generated from <clears throat> our rooms. And I run it uh, the standard uh, daylight factor. So as you can see here, it ran quite nicely. I just use the default setting just to uh, show the proof of concept. Here we can see the outline for the buildings. So all works uh, perfectly. And here are the visualization for UDI. So I, um, I run annual daylight and it is working fine. So in this case, I use the limits between 200 and 2,500. And uh, it is working uh, great. So this is my uh, base case where I have all the standard setup and I was playing a bit with more uh, interesting case. So here it should be, yeah, the second approach. So what I did, I did this complex figure and I just draw the plane just to cut it. So it is more parametric and <clears throat> this is automatically later on generated through the panels. And again, I'm running this through uh, topologic just to make sure I have enclosed a uh, building. And this is our analytical model. And again, this is the sum to Hanabi is this kind of one node that translating this. And here again, I use the curtain wall, which was automatically translated to a wall with windows in Honeybee. And this is much more complex shape and still is working uh, very nice for this uh, tool. Again, I'm, I, I'm just checking here all the spaces. So everything seems to be fine. So we have this kind of nice museum type building. Uh, I'm gonna move now to Open Studio Run, and here we can see our uh, temperature for the space. No, I think this is the uh, actually loads. Those are the yeah heating loads, and uh, and again we have all uh, all uh, remaining data for all the spaces like. We could display all the capability of um, Open Studio, like the temperatures, loads, and and so on and so on. And at the bottom, I have uh, run a parallel run for TAS. Again, I'll just run it. So this is just the GBXML, T3D, TBD, and TSD. So it's the standard uh, workflow. And then again, we're using the same model to run in the second tool. So I just run it, and I will just open the model. So as you can see. Oops, it's still opening. It's all perfectly recognized. And here, as you can see, I'm using this kind of curtain wall. So I'm just ticking in this box. The glass is, uh, the wall is glazed. So we don't have the problem uh, with, uh, with that. In Hanabi, we're transforming this into wall of windows. And this is our uh, TSD file with the results after simulation. So as you can see, the model simulated, and we have this file uh, generated with all the results that we can access if uh, if we want to. So for I think task user, it's, it's quite clear which stage we are at, and the same thing with the uh, daylight. 
So here we created a grid. In this complex building, all I did is just created a grid for all the internal surfaces. Here we have the daylight and the outline of the building. So it is working quite nicely. And the second one is the annual uh, daylight UDI. So again, it works fine. So I, I am very, very pleased with this link. Uh, we finished just construction materials. We still have one step to do, which is the program and internal condition. So yeah, feel free to click on all this blue text. It's, those are just the links to the tools. And I hope we can collaborate better together to produce better buildings. So thanks everyone for amazing collaborations, huge list, and this was super cool.